babes. Welcome to the Sister Jam tonight. I'm so excited to have you. And we're at the end of this 30 day reset. I feel like it went by so quickly. Um, but I would love for you to kind of um, share if you feel called to share the things that maybe were challenging, the things you loved, the things you wish you had more of, and kind of give um, some insight and share your journey over the course of these 30 days. That would be amazing. And you can, I think, um, Sam, you're first on my screen if you if you're open to sharing. I think you're muted. Um, okay. Hi, everyone. Um, let's see. Um, so you want me to explain what was challenging? Yeah. Well, just like whatever you want to share, like sometimes like when you're going through something, especially something like this, there's going to be things that <laughs> maybe you found challenging, maybe things that you've reflected on, things that you love, things that you didn't like, whatever you want to share, really, not necessarily the challenges, but just a little, uh, little tidbit. I definitely think there was enough to, uh, you know, to work with that you provided. Like There wasn't a lack of anything um I honestly felt like I sometimes got a little too busy with life and I, I probably should have dedicated more time than I did to the program which I'm hoping for the the next one that you know I dedicate more time because even though I I incorporate like meditation and so like, like I, I do that daily, but it's like, you know, I listen to your podcast and stuff like that, but it's like, you know, I needed to dedicate, I think a little more time, honestly, okay. but there was so much, but the good thing is that I could always go back to what you provided. So it's not like, you know, it just disappears. No, so, no, 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 I'm not yeah. going to do that to you. <laughs> yeah. It's but, yeah, it was great. Forever. Awesome. And also the chat, the chat itself, like the, um, just, you know, being able to chat with everyone daily, it, it definitely helps as well. It makes you feel less alone. You know what I mean? It makes you feel a part of the community. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing. Uh -huh. Miss Lisa? Hi. Hi. Oh, my God, Shelly. I, lo I loved the calendar. It was so awesome the way you there, – there, I like how it was, you know – you know, go at your own pace. If if one day something's not feeling, you know, not connecting, go to the next thing. I love the tarot deck and I loved getting into the practice of picking my two cards each day. And now I'm just sitting here looking back going, oh, two of swords like came up five times. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then it also kind of like made me realize things that I was, you know, uh, not staying committed to, you know, something simple as it got me back in practice of starting my morning with my lemon and water. And it made me realize I am not making enough time for, uh, just like 10 minutes of journaling. And <clears throat> anytime I did the journaling, it was just that reminder of like, oh my God, it's like so, uh, therapeutic, you know? So even just five minutes, even if you just write a few sentences. So it's like this just um, way to make myself, you know, really stay committed. And, and like, you know, my 30 day radiance reset was always in the back of my head. Like, oh, let me check the calendar. Let me see what I feel like doing today. <laughs> you know, um, I definitely loved the um, the radiant was I think it was called the radiance, right? Sequence. Yeah. A lot of you loved that one. Yeah, it was like, interesting, right? Like with the pressure points and everything. That was so interesting. And, Different. you know, and I did the heart opener one um, last night, actually. And it was really, I've never done anything like that, where you moved your arm out and like put your fingers back. How that feels. I was like, whoa, 
Yeah. That was very cool. I never did anything um, like that. And EFT tapping is, is new for me. And it's, again, never realized, wow, you know, it's just like another tool that, you know, you can use to work with anxiety or stress. Um, I love the whole connection and I love the whole, um, on Instagram, how you created that way for, it was so great to hear, you know, everybody's this group in there is like the bomb.com. You I got guys <laughs> are me, and like, I literally have chills as I'm saying, like your energy has drawn together such beautiful, beautiful souls. Like these women are amazing and to be vulnerable and to just share and be willing to say, you know what I effed up today, or, you know, I'm, I'm on the path of growing and just be willing to show up for yourself. Like, I'm just, I don't know. I just feel like I said a prayer before I got on the call and I just said, you know, just please bless everybody in this group and just how grateful I am for you, Shelly. And oh, thank you. I'm grateful for you, to, all of you. To be part of something like this is just, I don't know. It's very fulfilling and it's very validating. And it's, it's a reminder that, you know, your, your tribe is out there. And it's healthy to make these connections and to learn and grow from, from one another. And it is a big reminder to me that um, it is important to have that, that coaching, that leadership. It, it, it really makes you accountable for yourself, you know, in a way that you just, you're not going to really do it on your own, you know, so like true. you just fall off the track, which is very normal, but um, I just loved it. I really thought, Thank you so I mean, much. Everything how you put together. Things. You, could, you could tell me the shitty things too. I, I won't take offense. Um, the longer, <laughs> I will say the longer practices. I Okay, I good like, to okay, know. I don't have enough time for that. Okay, perfect. That's um, great to know. And this is like the first one I've done. So that's great. And I'm going to send out, um, if, if you would be so kind to, I'm going to send out a Google form sheet where um, you can kind of, put additional information in there and like a little testimonial because this helps me refine it for the next one and for the next one until I really develop something that is really, really functional and useful for all women. And you yeah. can go in as deep as you'd like, you know? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, Miss Christina. Hello. Hey girl. Uh, I think Oh, hold on. I opened this little chat. That's okay. So I think, um, I agree with Lisa and, and Sam. Um, I, I think what I focused on a lot was I have a really good morning routine, like already. Um, so it was nice to be able to use some of the, the tools, the new tool for me was the EFT tapping. I've never done that. I've heard of it, but I've never utilized it. So it was cool. And I did, um, there's one at the beginning and then the one that like the instructional no one of how to like what's what. So that was super helpful. And I really liked that. And then I was able to use it with somebody at work. Like one of my, I love that. Staff, like one of my staff was having a hard time. I'm like, let's try this new thing that I tried this morning. I fucking so, love that so much. <laughs> and she loved it. She, she was like, that actually worked. I'm like, right. Isn't that crazy? I was like making up my own, like affirmations I couldn't remember them but I'm like I think it was this that so, yeah and what's interesting um, is, is with the EFT if you guys all resonate with it over time you end up it'll come to you what you're intended to say so that's why I gave you that little worksheet because you could kind of keep it there and just like know like okay I do it here I do it here and then just allow your intuition to guide you because it, interestingly enough over the course of the time that I've done it the the truths that come through without my conscious awareness is, is fascinating. Yeah. So I loved that. Um, and then like Lisa said, some of the things were kind of, were too long for me. Um, okay. and so I would try, uh, but mostly like the EFT tapping and, uh, some of the, like the videos I would, I would listen to on the way to work. Um, cause I have like a 30 minute commute. So, um, anything that was 30 minutes, I could <laughs> kind of do. And then if I, once I got to work, if I had time, I would like continue to listen. Um, I didn't, I know it wasn't part of it, but I 
cut out caffeine, I think like the second week and I haven't had any caffeine since or coffee um, specifically. Yay. Yeah. So I think I can't remember who on the chat was like, when I did it, I felt really good. And I hadn't at that point, like I wasn't trying to cut it out. I was just trying not to have it like first thing in the morning. So then that was whoever said that, like, it was like, all right, let me try this. I've tried it before. Um, and then I just kind of stuck to it. So I was like, okay, well, this is like a promise I can keep to myself. Um, that felt like aligned and it felt good because I just felt more steady throughout the day because I'm pretty energetic like I don't think I need more caffeine in my life, but <laughs> I just enjoy the way it tastes so um so that was cool and then I really need to well not need to I really want to focus more on my evening routine that's a little bit harder just because it's not something I'm like a morning person and by the time I come home it's like eat whatever so there was a couple of days where I was able to do like a more like an evening routine and it really helps like relax me. So I want to try to get into something. I know it doesn't have to be like a long ritual. Um, cause I think if like the longer it is for me, like the less likely I am to do it. Um, but something, so that's what I kind of want to work on, like moving forward. Um, and of course, like the chat was, was awesome. Just the accountability. So, uh, overall, I really found it really successful. And I do like the fact of like the no pressure. I don't know. I think Lisa mentioned that, like that felt really good to me and just being able to pick and choose and not feel like, oh my gosh, I didn't do this or I didn't do that. Um, made it more enjoyable. Awesome. And the tarot, the tarot cards too, I've never used them before. So it was kind of fun to do that. Um, and it gave me like different insight into myself so cool. it's cool yeah I love that so yeah. much thank you so much for sharing I appreciate yes. you <laughs> Miss Mari this is water and not wine just so you know I just like to be fancy just whenever. a second my son is calling me he's at the airport I'll be right back okay okay right, Gigi can you guys hear me yes Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Shelly, and everyone for being part of this. Um, as always, very grateful to be in any of your events, Shelly. Um, you know, with me, I think the biggest challenge in my life right now and the reason why I wanted to join this reset with you is due to a, what seems like a very stressful, like, routine and life. And as I look around and, you know, I talk to some of my coworkers and just my friends and my girlfriends and this, that, um, we all just kind of feel that same like routine, like dread, like, you know, we're, we're burned out, we're tired every day, and then we have to get up and do it again the next day. So it's, it's a lot. And I'm trying like now I'm 35 now. So it's like, this is a time where I'm really trying to be like, what is all of this about? Like, what is going on? What is even the, like, what am I doing? Like, okay, I'm working in something. I get it. I know what I do. I know what, what I do for work and how it, you know, um, how I serve people, but then it's like, what is all this stress for? Like, is this necessary? Oh my God. Like, okay. Like I work in construction. So there's a lot of stress. Um, we build homes, but okay. You're going to get a house. We're going to make this work, but why does it have to be this crazy? Mm -hmm. So then my girlfriends and they're just like yeah like one of my girlfriends works here there wherever and they all work places and it's just like the same thing like what is this and you just can't get a break and then you go to the grocery store and it's 150 dollars for like a carton of milk and then you go over here and then there's traffic and then there's this and then I'm like by the time I get home and I just want to like spend time with my family that I've created I'm done I can't I don't know how to do it. Like I, my boss gets the best of me. These people that I don't even know get the best part of me. They get me all day long. And then I go home to my family and I'm just like, I'm too tired. I can't. Yeah. So I just, I'm just like trying to find like some sort of sense in that. And I guess part of it is accepting it and then just working with it and making it better. Um, yeah. Or, I mean, there is an option to change that too. It is. So then, so the part of this reset that really helped me is, um, is, you know, I thought that I had to downgrade my pay or downgrade what I do or like demote in order to have a better life or a happier life or a more um, sustainable approach to life. 
And, and then I did a lot of the journal prompts and I realized I'm like, oh my God, I don't. And then when I met Daphne in that one talk and the way she described things, I'm like, holy shit. Like I don't have to degrade, like, I don't, sorry, not degrade. I don't have to demote myself. Right. I don't have less money and, and substitute my lifestyle just to be healthier. So it's, it's those, it's that theme that like brought me here. Um, you know, with, with the calendar, the calendar is amazing. Um, I also love the flexibility of it because, uh, you know, it's, I, I, I guess on a, on a one like small negative thing is that I have a commute and then I work and then my job is stressful and then I have a commute back. And then by the time I get home, it's like eight o'clock every night and I do it all over again. Um, so sometimes it's like, I, I hated the feeling of having to like, like answer to something else. Like I'm answering to something. I'm, I have to commit to something all day. And then I was like, when I get home, like, oh gosh, yes, I have to do the reset. Oh gosh, yes, I have to like spend time on that. That was a small feeling. So I was trying to be like, how can I make that feeling a little bit better? But there was no pressure. It wasn't a thing where it was like, you have to do this. But I put the pressure on myself to do it. So then it also creates stress sometimes. Because I'm like, wait, I'm in this to try to like, you know, get a healthier balance of this and just eat right and exercise a little bit more. And then it, it's like one of those uh, paradoxes, right? Well, it's interesting because we're going to go over some really fascinating information tonight that I believe is going to really hit home for you um, with what you're explaining, <clears throat> because what you're saying is, is that there's not enough time for you. Yeah. And, and what you said is like, you're, you know, you're giving the best to your boss. And then, you know, when you get home, you're tired and you're finding it difficult to even create some refined time to fill your own cup. Mm -hmm. And that's the burnout. You know, when you, when you don't carve out that time, then you're really moving from an empty space of vitality. So we'll get into that a little bit deeper, but I can totally relate because I was there for an extended period of time in my career as a nurse mm -hmm. and I was burnt out. I was exhausted and I decided that I was done with that. So we'll, we'll get into a little bit more um, information on these different archetypes that we're going to get through tonight that might help you gain a little bit more clarity with where you are and essentially where you would like to be. And recognizing that you don't need to downgrade, you need to upgrade your desires and you need to upgrade your sense of self-worth mm -hmm. and recognize that you don't always have to be in a stressful situation. There's other options, you know? So for that's, that's the thing for me personally is my, my stress level, like, and that's why I joined this because I just have crazy amount of stress and I just I'm like what is that so how do I combat it right yeah um, you gotta take care of you girl I know and that's what this is for yeah but um everything was was um really beautifully orchestrated by you and and um I definitely I switched many days around just because of my schedule so I didn't always do the thing for that day but the fact that you could do that, it, it was that, I think that's the way you should do it. So that my, right. um, my feedback would be like, just like that, you create a calendar and then you allow everybody to pick and choose how they do their days in a way. Cause some days you just like, I can't move today. Right. Um, like physically, I can't do that yoga class right now. I just cannot for some reason, but I can do this. So that was really helpful. Um, and as I said, the tarot cards, like before I mentioned this and it was, um, first time getting into it, have not ever gotten into it before. So, um, very fascinating, uh, how it can help yeah. make sense of things and what your interpretation is, because everyone would have a different interpretation with every card, right? The same card, but three different people would interpret it three different ways, depending on your personal situation. So that's just absolute magic. Um, yeah. And, uh, the mirror work was probably a little challenging for me. I did mention this in the group chat. Um, but I'm mindful of it now, conscious of it. Again, the, the talk with Daphne was really helpful, um, in that subject as well. 
Awesome. So I'm hearing like more shorter chunks, maybe like 30 minutes max videos. I actually just worked on a couple um, breathwork recordings for the next reset that are like one's one minute and another one's three minutes. So I'm working on like bite-sized chunks so that way you can use that in the morning or in the evening um, because I heard you and I know that sometimes you need a resource that isn't extensive. Um, so I appreciate that input and I un totally understand with two boys, a family and, and a business and my private clients, I get it. I get on the time constraints, you know, and I understand that self-care is super important. And if you have a self-care option that isn't going to take up too much of your time, but really create that feeling you want to feel magic, right? Yep. Cool. Thank you so much, Miss Mari. Okay. I have so much to say. I hope I can put into words. <laughs> um, first of all, I have, you guys already know, I have mentioned before, I've been working with Shelly for a year and a month now in county. <laughs> um, and I decided to join this group just because I wanted to have accountability. I wanted to, you know, of course, we are always looking um, to improve in many different areas. I'm like, why not? I really like everything that she does. And I was very impressed that I learned so many different tools um, extra. Um, and I'm like, how does this girl know all this? And she doesn't even share on the private. <laughs> Although we still talk a lot on 101 about different things. But um, I, I'm very glad that Sam mentioned, was the first one to mention that we didn't, you know, it's um, hard to keep it up every day doing something. But what I like the most is that the breaks that you gave, you know, we, we can we have some breaks. So it's not like a 30 day thing to do things. Um, but also that uh, we have the tools and it's there for us anytime. Um, and even though I, I did not tap every day, I did, you know, journaling one day and then tapping another day and, and so on and so forth. And I think that for me, at least, um, it's a step for me to know um, how to get to that routine that I would like to do one day. It's little by little, even though I'm not doing it every day yet. Um, so it's it's an adjustment, right? We are still crawling here. I think we're all in this together um, and we are, you know, heading the right way. I loved everything. And I even the, the hour long ones, I would watch 30 minutes one day and then the next day I would watch and the rest 30 minutes. minutes. Um, I, for that grounding um, video, I, asked my husband to come and watch with me that was like an hour and a half video on youtube and that was really fascinating too um so i'm not complaining about the time because i like to have things to watch and things to do later on even though maybe now wasn't the right time you know like um to do everything but i will continue going back to that calendar for sure it was really good and like i said just i think for me the chat was a little bit overwhelming um, even though I love the community and I love, I just could not keep up with um, everybody, but I, I really liked, you know, when, when I read, when I was more present than not. So it's just me, my personality, but I, I love that too. Um, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know that's for some, it's like, oh my God, I have to catch up. But the right. reminder in the chat is like, trust that you're popping in at the right time. And like, you don't need to go all the way back. You know, like if you're if you're popping in and what you're seeing and what you're reading is what you're seeing and what you're reading, great. If you want to only pop in and just, you know, ask questions, that's what it's there for. It's there for resources, it's there for all of us because we're all going through it together. Um, so don't don't ever feel like it's like, ah, like I have to. You don't have to. Just trust that you're popping in at the very right time and you're sharing at the very right time. I know Kara has been like popping off in the chat over here because I know that she has um she has some things so thank you so much Cara for sharing we will get into it well I'm so grateful that you found this useful that is my mission my mission is to really empower you with tools and tactics to really bring you back to your essence and it does take time as Murray says like it's an ever-evolving happening like I am still going through it I am just sharing the tools that have helped me and that have helped my clients in efforts to really 
bring other women to those modalities to awaken parts of themselves and open doors within themselves that maybe they didn't know existed. Um, and I'm really, really stoked that you are a part of this. Each and every one of you really made this very rich in your own way and really brought to the table such beautiful questions and such beautiful stories um, that it was just amazing. The group chat, in my opinion, was like fire. Like I couldn't wait to like get in there and like dive into the conversations. So um, I am going to be offering each of you um, a special discount for the next reset. If you want to get in on that, um, I will be sending out an email with that discount code. And because you are a part of the reset, I'm also giving you $500 off any one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, mentorship programs that you would like to get into with me. And I'm going to send that link here in the chat. And if you sign up within the next 48 hours, I'm going to give you access to all of my courses that I've created. And I've created almost, I think it's three or four courses. Um, so if this is something that interests you, I would definitely check it out. And um, if you don't sign up within the next 48 hours, the $500 off still stands until next Tuesday, which interestingly enough is Valentine's Day. But like, you know, me and astrology and the days. And I was like, it has to be a Tuesday because it's Mars Day. It's an action day. This is the day you take action. And then I looked at it and it was Valentine's Day. I was like, perfect. Self-love done, done and done. So um, it's going to be the $500 off is going to be um, great until that Valentine's Day. And there's monthly options available too. And I will be sending out an email with all of that additional information as well. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to reach out. I am available. All right. So let's dive deep into tonight's conversation. I'm really excited to share this with you because I have been on my own journey and I've done, you know, inner child work, I've done mother wound and all these different progressions of life, so to speak. And as I said before, life is like never done and the unfolding is never done. But I was reading and listening to um, Call of the Wild and there were different things that came up for me that were really powerful and helped me put together that we are as women very multifaceted and society has you know really put us into a box for the most part saying that we're supposed to be calm we're supposed to be passive and whereas the man can have that rage but like us as women we have sacred rage like our rage is very very powerful in conjunction with a whole bunch of different archetypes so tonight's little lecture and I didn't know I was doing this until two days ago to be honest because I was like spirit where am I going what what should I bring to the table for these girls and this is what came through and these archetypes are opportunities for you to find these little tidbits within yourself to recognize holy shit I need to balance that out holy shit I'm a little bit over here holy crap, like I never thought of it that way. I never realized it in that fashion. So I hope you have your pen and your paper ready because we are going to be getting into this. Um, and it's really like a lot of it was channeled as I was making the PowerPoints. So I really want to make sure that you guys have your, and probably things will come through as we go through it now. You have your pen and your paper. And then before we dive deep, I really would love to start with this little sound. So if you've ever taken a yoga class, we've all done the whole OM, right? But um, let me see here. This is going to be a uh, VU. So it's like almost imagine like V-O-O. -O. So it's going to be Boo. And you want it to be like very guttural and very deep. And what this sound is going to do, it's actually going to calm your nervous system. And we're going to go through it three times. And in between, we are going to pause. And this pause is really intended for you to really feel what, what comes up for you and notice the shifts that are happening within you. So I am actually going to share my screen. Um, now and i want to see if i could 
can one of you unmute yourselves? Do you only see, like when I do that, you only see one person? Do you see me on the screen? I still see you. I still, I see everybody on the right. So everyone's stacked on the right. Okay. Yeah. Because I recorded one and everybody was on one side and I was trying to figure out um, the presentation part. So, all right, we'll figure it out. All right. So get yourself comfortable. And let's just close our eyes for a moment and land where we are. Finding some gratitude for this gathering, for each woman here and a part of this. Maybe dropping into your body, scanning from the top of the head all the way down to the tips of the toes, just feeling any areas that could use a little bit more relaxation. And maybe taking a couple deep cleansing breaths in through the nose, out from the mouth. And see if you could begin to initiate a belly breath breathing with your natural breath, but just beginning to notice and activate just that belly and that navel pressing out and in with your breath. And then let's inhale to prepare and make it guttural as you begin. Breathe naturally, feel the pause. One more time, deep breath in. And then for this last one, I want you to open and close the mouth a little bit and the lips. And it's going to be like a sound like this. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I know it sounds really funny, but it feels really good. So we're going to inhale and move with your intuition as to like when you switch. So inhale. Boo, wow, wow, Gently bring one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly. And instead of using your mind as you listen to what's being shared tonight, I invite you to use your heart. 
to drop into your body and notice what your body feels as you listen. To tap into what comes up. And trust that you will hear and you will connect and you will resonate with what you are intended to connect to and resonate with tonight. Deep breath in together and vocal exhale, let it go. All right, welcome to this archetype conversation that each and every one of us as women embody, saint, the servant, the siren, and the sorceress. And as I mentioned, this is a part of our healing progress and our progression as women and healing the relationships and the dualities that we have as women within ourselves, because we are multifaceted and that's what makes us so beautiful. And it's not to say that men are not, but I can only speak to the woman because there are so many different lifetimes. I feel like I've personally been through um, just at the age of 36 that it continues to grow and it continues to evolve. And I think as women, we need to accept these layers and these parts of who we are. And that is the divine feminine. That is the divinity and the power that comes with the feminine. That is where the creation comes from. That is when the creativity comes from. That's when the ideas for businesses or whatever it might be come from. It's that resonance and that connection to and the acceptance of all the parts of who we are, even the ones that society has kind of shunned away as that's not womanly like, that's not lady like, whatever the case may be. So I am I decided to do this in efforts to really help provide some acceptance and awareness to the table as a woman. And this again is the embodiment of, right? It's not the I I can't curse or I shouldn't sit like this or whatever it is, whatever mental constructs that you think might be unfolding, but it's really allowing the emotions and allowing where you are to be authentic enough to be shared. And we oftentimes have created and established an identity, which we consider to be our personality. And we say, oh, well, that's just the way that I've always been, right? Or this is this is the way I do things. And that's just the way that I think. And we unconsciously are, are really constraining the possibilities and the potentials that we have as women. And when we find ourselves in situations where perhaps we feel a certain way that are deemed unacceptable for us over the course of time, we really silence who we are. And if we go back, 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 you know, the witch trials and everything else, we as women have really been silenced for a very long time. And in my personal opinion, I think that the feminine is, is finding ways to come out. Um, and I think that is also, you know, the uprise in, in the gay and lesbian community. It's like the feminine energy is needing an outlet to be expressed. And we as women need to really tap into that expression fully and not be ashamed or not feel guilty for what we are feeling and experiencing, but really speaking from a really, really sacred, sound, grounded place. And this isn't saying like, go lash out on your, your husband or your boyfriend because you're angry. It's having a conversation. Hey, I'm angry. Hey, I'm feeling this way in a way that is, you know, opening up a means of conversation, but still the ability to express it. And as women, as I mentioned before, we have these archetypes that we move through throughout the course of our lives. We are first the daughter, then the mother, whether or not you have children, it doesn't matter. There's still that servant character within us. And then it's the grandmother, which is the wise, right? The wise, wise soul and the wise woman. 
And each and every archetype that we're going to go through today has shadows because everything has its polarity. And it's not to say one is better than the other. It's just giving you an opportunity to accept these different facets that make you shine. And it's literally as if you were only allowing half of yourself to shine if you're only looking at one facet of who you are. So as we go along, just notice the ones that you maybe have worked with, notice the ones that you've suppressed, maybe notice the ones that maybe you haven't tapped into yet, and really use this as an opportunity to guide you deeper to self. Now, some of these pictures that I found are a little ratchet. But let me just tell you, I love them so much because as I was looking for, for, you know, pictures, I'm like, this is, this is what I'm talking about. It's the ability to, to do both and have both. And the saint oftentimes considered to be the maiden is really, um, like your younger, your younger self. Okay. And this typically represents, you know, and is represented in, in Disney movies as this like powerless female that needs rescuing or saving and, you know, hello, gaslighting and hello, you know, grooming our children to feel as though they need somebody to come save them or their Prince Charming to come save them. Right. Or maybe it's not, you know, a Prince Charming, but maybe it's your parents or something else outside of you, your job, your role, your career, whatever it is, right? And we really put a lot on the external world for our internal validation. And what's interesting about the saint is that she is very sensitive, very emotional, and really, really in touch with her feelings. And when you think about yourself as a child, and when you look at children, they really have that deep, deep sense of sensitivity. And this is, you know, again, the phase that we go through that for some have been robbed from us, right? Many women are sexually abused or molested. Um, many of us may have had really controlling or strict parents that forced us to grow up and our, our ability to, to be curious and to have fun and to be free and playful and have this like innocence about us, um, was really dimmed at a very young age, right? And when we look at what this archetype really contains at its core is, is developing new strengths and skills and knowledge, but really struggling deeply with being alone, right? Like being alone in your own space and the ability to be like, yeah, I have this alone time and finding discomfort in being alone may be an indicator that your joy or your curiosity or your desire for fun and playfulness and exploration as a child on your own was robbed of you in some way, shape or form. And I'm just giving a couple examples, but this could be anything. It could be a trauma, right? It could be a death at a young age that you experience. Like it could be anything. But when you've been forced and pulled out of that sense of innocence, you weren't able to develop this part of you that really is the nectar and the seedling for the full, full bloom of who you are. And this is, um, you know, an opportunity for you to really recognize, are you waiting for life to happen to you? Or are you choosing to make life happen for you? And the, the, the example that comes to mind is like, you could take a particular situation or relationship that you're in and you could say like, this is it. Like, that's it. Like, this is what it is. I got to figure it out. Or you could say to yourself, this is what it is, but I do not align with what that is. It doesn't feel right to me. I can be curious and explore what other possibilities might be there for me. I can be playful and take time for myself. Hit the pause button, claim a full time out. Maybe put your feet in the ground, really tap out and tune in, okay? And I loved this picture because it's kind of like she's smoking, I don't know if it's a vape or whatever. Um, maybe it's a marijuana, who knows? But she's also learning. And this is a part of learning yourself. This is a part of going back and like checking in with who you were as a child and maybe some of the themes that came up. So here's a couple questions to ask yourself. Do you want to be saved by Prince Charming? And I put that in air quotes because it, it's it's not necessarily 
you know, a masculine or a partner. It's, do you want to feel like somebody's going to save you? Do you want to feel like something else outside of you has to save you? Whether it's, I need a relationship so I can move out and go to be in a different apartment. I need, you know, a, a partner to do this, or I need this to do that. I need more money to do that. Right. Um, do you often feel like you're a victim to external circumstances? Again, there's that mentality. It's like, this is what it is. This is what it is. And like, I'm stuck. I'm ball and chain. Nothing else can change. Right. I'm, I am a slave to my external circumstances. And that is not the case. Like you are so fucking powerful. You just have to wake yourself up to that power again, because it was taken from you and you weren't able to really marinate in it long enough to, to really tap into that. And you can tap into it again, but you have to give yourself a permission slip and a hall pass to do it. And if you're stuck in this, in this constant, you know, rut, it's going to be very hard to pull yourself out of it. But that is the only way that you can really reconnect and reestablish that deeper connection to the saints within you. Another part of this is, do you deny your feelings or desires or facts? So this is maybe being, you know, pretending sugar coating that's like maybe you know something's happening and you don't like it but you're just going to pretend like you don't know maybe it's not expressing how you feel not feeling like you're worthy of your desires or not feeling like you're worthy of being seen or heard or your feelings heard i remember you know and i i i tried to do this i stopped doing this with my kids but it's like stop crying right it's like stop crying like you're driving me fucking nuts stop crying but at the same time that is denying their natural feelings to be expressed. And over time, you know, when they get older, there's going to be a conflict, right? So I do my very best to be mindful of that, but tapping into that, maybe going back a little bit, like did people tell you don't cry? It's fine. It's okay. You're fine. You're okay. Right. Notice that. Do you live in a fantasy mentality of what could be without acting towards it. So you're imagining like, oh, I could have this amazing job making like buku bucks working from home. It's super chill. And then you're like, but I'm not doing anything to do that. I'm not, I'm not trying to figure out how to make that happen. I'm just going to stay here. Are you emotionally dependent on people, objects, or things to give you a sense of solace, right? Alcohol, substance, people, dependency, codependency is huge here. Sometimes people don't know who they are without their partners. They don't have anything, you know, outside of their partnership. And it's like the exploration, the curiosity, the trying of new things that keeps you connected to a deeper part of your being where you don't get lost in the sauce around you. Um, do you typically attract abusive relationships? Okay. Where, you know, it kind of, if you're feeling all the things that we've discussed, it, the relationships that come your way are oftentimes, you know, mirroring those emotions in, in, in another person. So that other person will be like, don't you're, you're, that's, you're a liar. Like that doesn't matter. Stop saying that. Like they don't validate how you feel. Like, let's say you don't feel like that person's loving you when you say that it's like, oh, well this, this, and that, oh, well this, this, and that, like that is a form of verbal abuse because it's telling you that your feelings are not valid. Right. So tapping into like those parts, do you project parts of yourself through judging others? Do you oftentimes look at people and you're like, oh my God, that chick's so wild. Oh my God, she's naked on Instagram. Like who the fuck cares? But notice that because it's telling you a little something, something about yourself, okay? Do you not feel comfortable in your own skin to do that, right? You know, do you want that purse or do you want that car? And you're like, oh, that's too expensive. That, you know, oh my gosh, how could somebody spend that kind of money? Check yourself before you wreck yourself because those those little parts that we sometimes will just like, you know, flick around are really, really big indicators of what's going on within. And do you find yourself pretending to be someone you aren't? So maybe like having layers of, you know, I really, I, I'm this great, you know, mom, whatever, like it to the outside world, but in the house, like you're not. And I'm the first to admit, like being a mom is fucking hard, right? But we do our best with what we know how. Do I lose my shit? Absolutely. Okay. And it's not that you don't lose your shit. It's how you choose to work with that, right? Like, okay, babe, you got home. I got to go. Like, I need a minute, right? 
So the balance saint is very enchanting, very charming, full of vitality, open-minded, curious, pure in a world where this is really, really rare. And so, 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 so trust the big you, like the universe, like no problem. She's gallivanting. Like the image that I have in my mind is like this little girl, like skipping in the woods and like there's scary things in the woods and there's monsters in the woods. And she's like, la, 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 la. everything's great. And like, for some reason, one of the monsters gets, you know, a tree falls on him and like something else happens to the other monster. And she's just skipping around like in her own world. Right. Because when you are that trusting and when you are that connected to that deeper sense of self where it's like, I'm going here and I'm going to have a great day, blah, 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 blah. But feeling it, not just like reciting it in your mind, but like really feeling it and living it out. It does work out for you. It's the mind that oftentimes gets in the way. And the saint has that, 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 I guess I, I don't want to necessarily call it a trauma, but the saint, the shadow of that has that part that the mind creeps in and may poison the beautiful, beautiful essence or tincture that is, okay? So a couple things with the saint wound. I, I, I don't know. I, I love these I love these pictures. Sorry if anyone's offended, but, it's, but I found them very intriguing. Okay, so um, the wounded saint doesn't trust her intuition, doesn't trust where she's, like the impulses are coming. Maybe she wakes up, she has the impulse to go to this coffee shop and she's like, nah, I won't go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to spend the money. Or she has an impulse to call this friend and she doesn't or whatever it might be. Trusting your intuition is really a part of trusting the impulses that you feel where you're being led. Each of those little tiny impulses are going to bring you to that big ping, okay? So the impulse to sign up for this reset, okay? Who knows where it's led you? Who knows what it's opened you up to, right? And that's going to open you up to something else. Follow the next ping. Follow the next ping. Um, the wounded saint also falls deep within the masculine. So because the feminine factor of the, like the young child, um, has kind of fallen away, there is like this grow up kind of energy where we end up stepping into the masculine and the masculine isn't necessarily acting masculine. It can be, but masculine meaning like go, 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 do, do, do like logical, super heady, right? A woman is supposed to be really, really tapped into her body and tapped into her emotions. Like that is the, that is the balance to the masculine energy, right? And, um, really recognizing like, where am I really embracing a lot of my masculine? How can I tap more into my feminine? Um, and maybe for starters, it's just putting on lipstick and mascara, or maybe it's putting on something a little flowy. Okay. I already mentioned this, but too logical does not feel safe expressing herself fully. Um, can like, can be really angry as well. Um, and this is something that I really dealt with and I still am working with. It's like a lot of the layers have fallen off, but like anger and frustration are something that are really, really, um, ingrained in me, but I've learned that my anger was repressed sadness. So because the, the, the child's like demeanor and like that innocence was robbed at such a young age, or perhaps for some you know, reason not tapped into, there's a sadness there as a woman that ultimately can over time really be build and create anger. And even too, like, think about, you know, if somebody passes away when, when you're a child, you're like angry, right? At God, or, you know, if somebody like, you know, took advantage of you, like you're angry at that person. And that is essentially sadness at its core. Okay. And again, seeking out external validation. So the overdeveloped versus the underdeveloped. So as we're looking at the overdeveloped, meaning again, the polarities, but the opposite ends of those polarities. So overdeveloped is sexual promiscuity, free experience and like that wild child's energy, um, very abrasive or very like forcing with like the way that they speak, um, very distracted, thrill seeking and the inability to commit. Okay. Um, I have a couple people that I can recite right off that are like, I don't really want to commit. And that is a, a, a 
disassociation from their their childhood like essence and that innocence okay and that that distrust that they've developed at a young age for people around them and for life and for god so the underdeveloped is um fear of wild natured women body shaming um maybe sexually shame like when you see something that's like any type of bit sexual, it's like, oh, like that feels weird. Okay. Very rigid, prude, um, cuts off deep pleasure seeking, insecure. Uh, the life force shuts off or is really channeled in the wrong area of life. So, you know, thinking about, okay, I have this life force and it's like, you know, beautiful and amazing, but I'm channeling it and all of my energy is going to this really toxic relationship that I have over here. Okay. And yet the saint is feeling like she's doing something good because she should be with this person and all of these things because it's for that person and she has that need for codependency whether it be you know a person a job you know like a substance whatever it is right and there is this kind of ball and chain there right so we have to recognize with this kind of archetype where is our essence going where are we channeling our energy do we have a fear of letting go? Okay. Do we have a fear of like, what's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? Are we here? Well, what do I do? Like, um, what am I going to do for money? Or where am I going to live? Or what, like, where do we go? And the essence of the saint is trusting. And that's why I loved the, the nun and it'll come full circle is like the nun literally dedicates herself to, to the church. Right. And as she dedicates herself to the church, she loses herself, right? In the sense of celibacy in all these different ways. But she is essentially supposed to be very connected to God. And God at its core, and forgive me if I offend anyone, is your higher self. Okay. When we're talking about your higher selves, babes, we're talking about the best version of you on your highest timeline. That is your higher self. Your higher self is the version of you that you know in your core exists and you desire to embrace it and embody it fully. Your highest version in your highest timeline. And the self, okay, is a connection to the capital S self, which is the universe, because it is an extension of who we are, okay? So how do we work with the saint? So this archetype, um, again, is, is, is a very powerful one and connecting to things that maybe brought you joy as a child is also very important. So I know that I liked painting. I liked ballet. I tried ballet a couple of times and I was like, okay, maybe not anymore. Um, but excuse me, art, uh, think about the things that you really enjoyed as a child, as you were growing up and maybe start to, to, to allow some of that back into your life. Um, when you're being overwhelmed or have a lot of to-dos or need to-dos or responsibilities, um, or you really need a break from routine, this is a time to call the saint in, okay? She is your sister lifeline. Like, that's your sister, okay? Like, call her in. Like, visualize her however you want to visualize her. Maybe it's the little you. Maybe it's, you know, a, a depiction. Maybe it's one of these nuns that I posted up here. Like, call on her and say, like, I'm overwhelmed, I have a lot on my plate. I hate this fucking routine. Show me the way out. Help me be curious. Help me explore. Help me know what I need to explore. Help me feel it in my body where the next step is. And give me enough oomph to go there and do it and actually do it. Because it's one thing to be like, oh, Reiki really interests me. And then you drop it. But when you follow that ping, Reiki interests me. Let me go on YouTube and see what Reiki is all about. Let me see if I really like it. Oh, wow. Let me see if there's any Reiki sessions in my area. Let me see if there's any Reiki trainings in my area. Can I incorporate Reiki in what I do as a nurse or as a yoga instructor? Whatever the case might be, follow the pings. And it doesn't, oh, you don't, you need to, to stop with how am I going to afford it? If it's meant for you, it'll find a way to you. Trust that enough. And that has happened to me more times than one. I remember when I hired my first coach, it was a hefty chunk of money. And I was like, if this is the coach who I need to be with and hire, may this money come and make itself, you know, present. I was cleaning out my uncle's apartment and my husband found this 
bag, like, like envelope of cash. And it looked like my handwriting on it. And it said, have fun or something like that. And it looked like my handwriting in red. And I was like, holy fuck. Okay. So trust. And this is not like, I'm sure so many other people have stories along those lines and I have plenty of them as well. This is not like hocus pocus. This is not me sitting there and saying like, please, please, please. I really need this money. I'm not begging. Right. I'm saying as a saint, listen, this is, this is what I think I need to do. Provide the finances, provide the right person, the right places, the right opportunities, right? The nun trusts God to lead the way for that woman, right? Trust your highest self, the highest version of your timeline. And instead of grasping or forcing or being abrasive or being so logical, know clearly what it is that you desire and toss it up into the ethers and say, if it's for me, it will come. If it's not for me, it's not for me and no harm, no foul, right? She teaches us what, well, sorry, I apologize. This is a little typo. She teaches us what we lacked in childhood that we need to embrace now. So this is a really powerful one. So I didn't realize this until I had one of my inner child healing sessions with a practitioner that I desperately wanted my mother's love. And at the same time, I really rejected it because the way that she showed me love was not the way that I accepted love. So in my eyes, she liked me, but she didn't love me. She didn't allow me to speak. She, she didn't hear me at my core. She might've been like hearing my words, but she didn't hear what I was really trying to say, nor did she attempt to try and hear what I was really trying to say. So these are things that you can kind of begin to sift through and it may not be easy. Okay. And I know this is hard work sometimes, but the hard work pays off because that clarity really sets you free from the shackles that you may not even be conscious that you have. Okay. She shows us the foundation of how we are and what built us into this being, right? Like our core selves. And she calls us back to our inner wisdom and power right? It's the invitation to be like, yeah, this, this shit happens, but like, I'm still here. Tap into me, call on me. I'm here. All right. So we're going to do a little bit of work along the way. So I really want you to tap, tap into your St. Sam, your St. Mari, your St. Lisa. Okay. I really want you to tap into your saint for a minute and maybe close your eyes and just visualize her. Maybe you take on a different persona and notice the qualities, notice the energy and maybe notice the environment. And if you're finding it difficult to envision anything, ask. Maybe call the little you, hey little Sam, hey little Lisa. Where are you? And then maybe extend your hand out and notice if she reaches for yours, if she's timid. she's smiling, if she needs a hug, give her a hug. And say, thank you for always being there with me. I choose to listen to you from this moment on. I choose to hear what you are trying to say under the words. And whatever else comes through, maybe 
I love you. I'm sorry for what happened, whatever the case may be. And tell her that you have to go and that you'll check in with her later. And take that visual with you whenever you just need to call on something in those moments of stress. Come back to that little you, come back to that saint within you, that higher power, that higher self. Children are so close to that. All right, and now I know you all have um, a pen and paper and I would love for you to write down 10 things you love about yourself. So this could be qualities, something you're proud of, something that you kicked ass on, whatever it is that comes through. I want you to really dive a little deep and it doesn't necessarily need to be something that you just recently did. It could be anything that over the course of your life, you were like really surprised at yourself or you found your strength doing something. Maybe you picked up something heavy and you weren't sure if you were going to be able to do it, but you did it. It could be anything big or small. Few more minutes. And then once you're done, just gently close your eyes. And then I want you to envision your most authentic form. The version of you on your highest timeline. What is her demeanor? What is she vibrating? Where is she? Who is she with? What is she doing? Wearing, driving. Refine her in detail. And know that that version of you that you see is accessible. That version of you is there else you would not see it in your mind's eye.
that version of you is you stepping fully authentically in your power zero fucks given about anyone else Embracing what you like, what you want, without any apologies or guilt. Maybe take a snapshot mentally and revisit her later. Asking her questions, how she got there, what she did. Any advice that she has for you? When you're ready, gently opening your eyes. And just noticing what came up for you and that. And some extras with working with the saints, dancing is medicine. Uh, I was dancing in the backyard today, naked, and I was loving life, okay? I put oil in my hair, on my body, like it was madness, okay? Dance, move your body, make altars or several. I actually have several little altars throughout my house and it has little reminders. So what do you want to embody? Maybe this crystal means something. Maybe this deity means something. Maybe this book means something. And it doesn't need to be like perfect, okay? You could put a book and a crystal on top of it in a corner and that is a reminder for you. Put these constant reminders of trusting the universe. Put these constant reminders of who you desire to embody, the energy of who you want to embody. And these little reminders, as long as they're created intentionally, will generate deeply in your subconscious mind, okay? This is how the subconscious mind works. It's seeing things repetition, like, rep, like repeatedly, but when you create and you take the time to make something, right? And make a little space, maybe you buy a specific plant and that plant represents whatever in that corner for you. Those little reminders, because you created that intention to do that and place it there, your subconscious mind will constantly see it and remember it, even though you're not necessarily focusing on it, okay? Connect to goddess mantras. I love Lakshmi. Lakshmi, my homie, she's She's, she's on my desk at all times. Um, but the Lakshmi mantra is incredible. There's also, um, I don't think I have it over here. I think I put it away, but there's a, there's a book that's called, I believe Shakti mantras, and it is all about goddesses, um, and goddess mantras to embody and invoke different energies. Um, Lakshmi is the goddess of wealth, abundance, um, love, like true love, um, she's, she's health also. So really connecting maybe to a couple different ones, seeing which one really resonates with you and working with those mantras, go somewhere new and go somewhere alone. Um, feel what it feels like to just be curious and not have anyone to meet up with or to do or anything of that sort, just moving freely and notice how you will be guided. Oh, I'm going to go into that store and I'm, you end up talking to somebody in that store and then you leave that store and that person that you talked to, you said, Hey, there's like this yoga class. You should go there. Oh, okay. Like, cool. Trust the flow. And when you do that alone, it will become easier when you come into this default world of reality that we have to keep that momentum going, because you're going to know what it feels like when you go somewhere alone and you do your best not to be on your phone as much, but you just allow, allow yourself and the universe within you to guide you to the next step into the next thing. Take a bath, make it sexy, get candles, music, wine, the whole nine, whatever you want. Take a bath, feel that sensuality. And also give yourself a rub down. This could be, this could be on your Yoba JJ, or this could be like a foot rub or whatever it might be. Okay. Um, but just give yourself the opportunity to, to drop back into your body. Sometimes, um, I like to do sometimes when I'm like really fr frantic and really stressed out, I like make little pads like this and I just go like this to my body and I go down my legs my, my stomach, my chest, like all over. And then I wipe off 
it's the negative energy. And I'm like, Shh, and shake it off. Okay. These are just tips that I personally do, um, but make it your own. All right. So from saint to source stress. Okay. All right. So let's take a moment to, uh, is that the same thing? Yep. Hold on. Wrong one. Hold on. So from, I guess this, this part's wrong. So from saint to sorceress. Okay. So in order to get to the sorceress, who, in my opinion, is the alchemization of all the different facets of who we are, the saint has to be honored. You can't avoid the saint and say, like, I'm not doing the inner child work. I'm not going to do the teenage work. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to feel that and expect to alchemize and work with your energy at its highest potential. It's like saying you don't, you don't, you're not creating a foundation when you build a house, right? It's extremely important. And diving into this is, is very, very important. You can't, you can't be lying to the sorceress. It is a, a process. It is levels of being and levels of knowing. All right. The servant. So this is, um, really connected to that, like that mother archetype. And this is that natural part of a woman that desires to help others and to serve. Um, and this could be as caregivers, this could be as nurses, this could be as, you know, sisters, mothers, whatever. It represents this maternal instinct and this desire to create life and also provide sustenance for it. Now think of mother earth. She is the great mother. In my opinion, I call her the great mother. And for a while, when I didn't feel connected to my mother, I felt like the, like mother earth was my mother. And that was like, I'm like, I'm a peopling of mother earth. Like I came from mother earth. My mom was the vessel, but I am a peopling of mother earth and mother earth has supported me, has guided me, has given me water, food, everything has taken care of me, has allowed me to live here. Okay. So even if a child is womanless, this archetype is responsible, protective, and finds satisfaction in caring for others. Mothers oftentimes put their needs on the back burner to make sure everyone else around them is taken care of first, right? And this over time evolves into neglecting your own needs and often really find it difficult to really set personal boundaries, which leaves people feeling depleted of energy. It's like, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving, and like, I'm spent, I'm done. Like, I care, I give a lot of fucks, but at the same time, I also have to give a fuck about myself, all right? So there's two mother archetypes, right? There's the caring mother, right? Because it has the shadow, the mother has a shadow, and then there's the neglectful mother. Um, and they both care carry these characteristics. They can both be stubborn. They can both be persistent. They can be very strong. Um, they lack patience and sometimes, or have patience. Um, they're very obsessed with certain things. Um, and if you could think of like a new, a new mom, they're like, Oh my God, the germs, the germs. Right. Um, and then the, the, the neglectful mother might be obsessed with, you know, my mom was obsessed with Christianity and like, it was everything. Um, and they can be very single-minded. It's like one way or the highway. This is the only way that it could possibly be. So when we look at the balance and the imbalance version, um, does the mother within you guide you to use the gifts that the great mother earth has given you? Perhaps teaching you to work with the moon phases, maybe cooking, herbs, connecting with nature in some way, shape, or form. This is the nurturing type of mother archetype, okay? Does the mother within you show you how to listen to your instincts, does it guide you to your instincts, right? Do you naturally follow the rhythms of the seasons and your body? And if you have balance in your life, what does it look like? And if you don't have balance in your life, what would that look like? Okay. So then the shadow of that is, you know, you point at other people and it, they're essentially showing you your flaws, very similar to the saint, right? Because it's like a projection. You're unable to show up as your best self and really struggle with losing an identity. So some mothers are like, my mom specifically was like, she was like, she was my mother till, till the day she died, telling me what to do, telling me what I was doing wrong, all of these different things, right? And that is because it is an identity. Um, and they oftentimes have this need or desire to control and are codependent on whatever it is, okay? And this opposing forces of creation and destruction. So there's this energy here up above. It's like, this is this is a fertile ground. You can create from here, right? This is like toxic, you know, negative energy. You can't, you can't create from this space. So how to work with the mother. So the core limiting beliefs of the mother is I am not enough. Okay. 
So looking at the areas in your life where you say that, and they, it could be said in various different ways. It may not necessarily be like, I'm not enough or like, who am I to want that? Or is, you know, what other example, like, um, do I know enough to do that? Do, can I charge that much? Whatever the case may be, there's a, there's a layer there that's like, I am not enough because we as the mother or the servant feel like we have to continually give and that we don't necessarily need to receive back, but we do. And this is a essentially a projection of what we are, but not what we want. Okay. And that is, again, the law of the universe. We will always attract what we are. So we can call on this archetype when we need to be creative, when we need to care for ourselves, care for others, um, when you need advice or when you need a hug, when you need comfort or need a safe space to feel. And, you know, for many of us, especially for women, there's always like this maternal relationship that isn't always the most seamless in some way, shape or form. And really recognizing those moments where like, all I really wanted was a hug, not an earful, right? And like being that for myself, okay? And saying like, stay inside, stay inside. You don't need to go to that. You don't need to do that, right? It's safe here. It's okay. Like you're fine. You don't need to keep going. You don't need to do all these things. You're doing everything right, right? And if you tell yourself all the time, like, God, I could have done that better. Like, is that your mom? Like, or is that your like that parenting figure? So here's a little prayer. Help me rest in my heart and offer unconditional love and compassion to all of my relations and to own and support my inner child, right? So here's the thing, back to the saint, that inner child energy, right? So that saint, right, needs a sound mother. But in order for the saint to grow into a sound mother, the saint has to be connected and tapped in tuned on, right? To be able to mother herself and to mother other people and serve other people from a safe space of give and take. The earth is an, is is cyclical, but it's also balanced, perfect give and take, okay? And again, the phases, like I mentioned before, the daughter, the mother, and the grandmother. So again, the great mother is the mother earth and she's a beacon, right? She shows us what it means to be a woman and also nurture as she nurtures herself, right? She has fucking hurricanes. She gets mad. She has fucking tornadoes. She has earthquakes. She has feelings. She fucking moves and she creates mayhem when she needs to, but she also provides. And that is okay because that is balance, right? When hurricanes happen, it's, it's happening because the earth is trying to fix itself, balance shit out. And sometimes it comes with destruction. Remember the mother, mother earth, creation and destruction, okay? So it's not saying that one is good or, or bad. It's just saying that they are both parts of one and recognizing the parts where you are and embracing both parts instead of denying parts, okay? So the shadow mother, this is the dark side of the mother because those burdens and those things that we have to do, all that overwhelm become too large for your own psyche. And they oftentimes lose touch with what it means to be nurturing. Okay. Not only to themselves, but to other people. And when we embrace this aspect within ourselves, instead of fear, it becomes the irritation for both the self and the others around us. Right. So it's almost like this, uh, this, this energy of like, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm losing my shit and me losing my shit. I'm projecting that on other people. People are feeling it. Okay. So this could look like checking out of situations. So, and again, this doesn't necessarily mean like as a mom, it could be your own mothering. So let's say you you're dealing with something emotionally and you're just like, fuck it. I'm checking out instead of going to your mother, instead of like going to your inner mother, right. Or going into nature to feel mothered. Right. Or this could look like I'm not a good mom if you are a mom, right? This could look like narcissistic tendencies and talk both within and outside of you, right? Denying the ones around us love because we feel like we're not being loved and we're not being seen, okay? A mother that lacks a sense of self-love can be seen in their shadow side as manipulative or controlling, 
This is someone who is gossipy and points out people's flaws. So people do not focus on their own. They're also controlling because, I'm sorry, these typos, um, because if they can't get any attention around them, then everyone else around them won't either, okay? And like full transparency, my husband, he he owns a business and he's been really busy lately. And he like comes home and I'm like, I made dinner and I did the laundry. And I was like, babe, a simple, like, thank you. He's like, you're right, you're right. I'm sorry, like I'm in my own head. And it's the ability to recognize like, I don't, I don't need you to do it all the time, but I do need you to recognize and, and show me your, some appreciation for what I'm doing, because you can get quickly into that feeling of I'm giving too much. I'm serving too much. Like I need, I need to serve myself. I need to tap out for a little bit. And it's recognizing when it's hitting a point before it hits that deep threshold of like outlash it's like I'm creeping up. It's creeping up there. It's creeping up there, right? And verbalizing it, voicing it, making things a little easier on yourself. Maybe that means getting a cleaning lady. Maybe that means, you know, getting food delivered to the house, whatever it is that can help offload some of the things that you might be going through. And also recognizing when you have these different tendencies and desire attention and asking your inner mother, you know, what attention was I lacking? What did I miss, right? What do I miss at its core? Unpack it a little bit. All right, so you got mother homework. Oh, yes. And this one's a beast. And I'm not gonna lie, especially if you've had some like heavy energy, like with your mom, write a letter to your mom, okay? And let it be guided by the good, the bad, the ugly, all of it, all of it. And I want to share something um, with you with regards to that mother letter that I found to be pretty interesting. Um, so as I was doing this, there were a couple things that came up, you know, as me writing to my mom, why were you always tired? Mm hmm why did you always criticize me for the things that I love to do? Why did you always call me to tell me the things that I did wrong or the things that I should have done better? There was that one time in the hospital a couple of days before you passed that you told me you were proud of me and my heart sank to my feet. I'd never heard you utter those words before. And that is all I actually wanted was for you to be proud of me. And it goes on like you can you can get really deep, but like give yourself the space to write your mother a letter. It clears so much. And then I want you to write a letter to the little you as if you were her mother, not the mother she had, but if you were the nurturing figure in her life, okay? And that could look like, I'm sorry you were never heard. I promise to always hear what you have to say. Um, I'm sorry that your needs were not met. I'm sorry that your innocence was taken from you at a young age. None of this was your fault. I love you. And really being able to honor those emotions that you had as a child and really hold the hand of the little you and have that little you guide you on your path because that is all we really are at our core is like little children using the the things that we we always learned to use these old you know ways to protect ourselves as adults but when we do this work we recognize those things that we use to protect ourselves as as children that don't work as adults because we're looking at it from a different perspective and we're opening ourselves up to seeing ourselves from a different perspective. So this is a really powerful practice. Okay, so how to work with the mother. Get creative, get in the dirt, get in nature, wear loose clothing, flowy feminine clothing. Plants are amazing. Okay, you wanna know why? Plants invoke the energy and I have a plant in certain corners, okay? Because plants invoke this energy of 
water me, give me some sunlight and leave me the fuck alone. I will thrive by my damn self. Okay. Doesn't need too much, right? All it needs is water and sunlight. Okay. So plants bring you back to that natural state of the mother. It's like, okay, I need to nurture you. I need to, 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 to you know, help you thrive, but it's going to be all cared for, for you. The universe has your back. Right. And we put a lot of like, yeah, my mom, my mom, my mom, we're pointing the finger like to our parents or to other things. And yes, they do definitely play a part, but you also play a part within yourself to give you the opportunity to thrive, to give yourself the opportunity to put yourself in the right environment, get yourself out of these old paradigm shifts, these old mentalities. So you can come back to trusting the universe or God or your higher self to lead you on this way, to guide you. Connecting to your menstrual cycle. This was really powerful for me. There's a really good book. It's called The Moon Divas. It's a little workbook and it helps you go through and understand your menstrual menstrual cycle and also how it's connected to the moon um, and also connecting to the moon phases because the moon holds that divine feminine energy as well. And what's interesting about men the menstrual cycle, there's also something that you can look into. It's called seed cycling. And there's different seeds that you eat at different ports, points of your menstruation um, that really can help support you because sometimes as women, we feel these like, you know, these ebbs and flows, but we're not supporting ourselves through the ebbs and flows because we're not conscious of them anymore. Back in the day, we all knew what the fuck to do, but now we're so far removed from nature that we don't. So really coming back to your natural state acts of service. So if you're a mom, I don't, I do not suggest going out and doing any kind of acts of service in the sense of saying like community service, because we're constantly giving, but Acts of service could be, you know, for instance, what comes to mind, I went to Target because my son has his little holiday party at school and I needed a heart box. And these two girls had this heart box and I was like, oh, where did you find those? And she's like, oh, they're over here. But I think we took the last ones. I was like, oh, don't worry about it. I was like, okay, thank you. And I walked around and she's like, wait, wait, excuse me. She's like, you can have it. I was like, no, 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 no. I don't, it's fine. I'll find something else. She's like, no, 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 have it. And she was so persistent. And I was like, oh my God, I walked away. I was like, oh my God, she gave me her heart box. And then I'm going around and I'm looking and I found a, like a whole bunch and I grabbed one and I ran over to where I saw her. And I was like, I found another one and I was able to give you back your heart. And I felt like, oh, I did something good. So she did something good. Right. And then me being able to find more to be able to give her one made me feel good. So that is also a form of active service. It's not necessarily like doing anything in the sense of like community service, although it can be, um, women's groups. So masterminds, women's groups, you saw how powerful that can really be and how supportive that can really be on your journey and the ability to give you different perspectives. Like you could say, give one question and somebody can like all, you know, every single person can give you a completely different answer and they're all going to jar up something within you. That is powerful inner work, powerful inner work. Highly suggest women's groups, highly suggest finding your tribe, connecting to them, and really, really being in that supportive space. Clear out your physical space this is something I mentioned in the very beginning. Very, very important. Where you live will rub off on you. Practice how to be practical and fix things that you thought only a man can do. This is really powerful. And some people are like, well, like, how is this like, you know, tapping into the feminine? It's stepping into your abilities. Okay. And it's also giving you a different outlook on roles. Okay. Instead of it being like, oh, like I need a man. I need a man to come change my life. Well, I need a man. I need a man. I need a man. No, bitch. You are completely capable and completely able to do it. You don't need a man. That is an external need validation that you desire for whatever reason, because you're seeking something else for your power. You are powerful. And it doesn't need to be like, I'm not suggesting electrical work or plumbing, ladies. I'm just saying, if you need to hang up, hang up a picture, it's not hard. There's plenty of YouTube videos. Try it. Just try it. Give yourself the opportunity to try something new and support yourself, okay? The root chakra work and journaling. So the root chakra is our foundation, okay? And that foundation is powerful. And that foundation is built, um, you know, within the womb from the ages of like, they say the zero to eight, 
Okay. Cause that's like your subconscious mind. So root work is really, really powerful to help mend that, that foundation. All right. Now we're to the siren. This one's one of my favorites. Um, because I feel like this was me at one point really heavily. Um, so the siren, um, sirens are, are, if you don't know what a siren is, sirens are mermaids who are able to really to lure sailors in um, and kind of put them in this hypnotic state with their singing and they essentially bring them to their demise and they kill them. Okay. And it's like this possessiveness. So this is the also considered to be the huntress, which is like this independent female, maybe like a warrior spirit. Um, she represents a woman's autonomy, the ability to pursue life as she sees fit. Um, she pursues visions with fierceness and self-sufficiency, making up the strong yet free-spirited persona. And this is essentially that woman that don't need a man. She don't want a man. Okay. She don't want a man. She is fine and dandy by her damn self because she's got it. She's got it all figured out or does she? Okay. So the evolved versus the unevolved. So it would like be really, um, challenging to really find yourself in, um, in, in the energy of the siren or the huntress or the warrior without being completely honest right? So like you can't come to the siren, you can't come to the warrior and you can't come to the huntress being timid because she will slice and dice you, right? Because she has this fierceness that's also dangerous, right? Like don't fuck with her kind of an energy, right? But she's self-sufficient. And at the same time, she holds and possesses this sense of softness, but you cannot come to her ill-faced you cannot come to her ill-willed because she can see right through it and she will cut you in the sense of saying like cut you off okay and this is a very powerful archetype this is somebody who really knows their power and their essence okay she doesn't avoid anything she's not scared of anything she's not scared to try new things she charges forward without hesitation if she fails so what something else will come up. It's not a big deal, right? She knows that life will take care of her. She knows and she trusts it. So when we look at the evolved expression, she's very self-reliant, courageous, vision-oriented, sympathizes with other women, an ally of other women, teaches others her ways, a leader, an example, and holds this emotional intelligence, but is also very forgiving and merciful, as well as mindful and clear cut. Again, so these are components of the evolved version of the siren. But when we look at the siren as like this archetype, there again is that polarity. There is that duality. So the unevolved is very powerful, obviously, um, and very intelligent with very clear strengths. They're quick thinkers. Um, they know what the enemy is going to do before it happens, right? They know how to manipulate a situation to get that sailor down into the oceans of the depths, right? So she can eat him up like a man eater type of energy, like a man eater, the song, like straight up right now is like what the siren is, right? Making it very difficult for people to take advantage of them and really um, has this great vision, both with their seeing eye and their third eye. So their third eye is keen. They know what's going on. They could feel it. They could pick up on things, right? But when we're looking at the unevolved energy, very selfish, right? Um, avoids being vulnerable because that's a sign of weakness, resents other women, right? Or is very aloof and like doesn't really, you know, care very much, pushes people away. People can't get close to her, can't get intimate, okay? Can use her powers, um, can use her powers really in, in, in the form of uh, aggression and in the form of ill will, right? So it's like, I'm really upset and I am going to kill you. Or, I mean, that's like in the sense of a siren in like a movie deal, but that's kind of using that energy of like cutthroat, very deep, um, and using her powers in a way that's not necessarily enriching or balanced can have a lot of anger, uh, very passionate, and that passion can oftentimes turn to rage, desires justice when things go wrong, competitive spirit, obsessed to be better, wants to be better, um, can be cruel, right? Um, and, you know, my mom, when I was younger, she's like, your words are like knives. They hurt so bad. 
like you cut deep with just your words. Um, very anxiety, like riddled with anxiety, overwhelmed, burnout, burnout, compulsive behavior, and a weak sense of self and lack of purpose or direction. Um, and again, they are polarities. There's always two parts of the archetype. And it's recognizing where these components reside and recognizing, wow, yeah, like this was probably my college, high school, college years. Um, like this was the energy, like I, not that I hated men, but like, I didn't want anything like that. Um, I didn't want, um, a man to, to, you know, rule me or anything like that. Like I was, I was the top, I was the alpha type of energy. So how do we work with the siren? Oh, the picture didn't come up. Um, this is where the opportunity resides, where you need to set boundaries in your life um, and stand in your truth unapologetically. So this is that cutthroat energy, but not so much cutting a throat. It is being completely and utterly honest and authentic with what you're feeling and expressing your needs and expressing what it is um, that you desire in a way that is sound and not um, destructive. So you have the right to think twice in setting your personal boundaries. You have the right to choose what is right for you. Okay. Drop into your body, understand your personal limits, recognize like, all right, I'm in my work day. I'm going through my flow. When it hits two o'clock, like I'm tapped out. Okay. Two o'clock tapped out tomorrow. I'm going to figure out if that's the same scenario. What is it that I do in the beginning of the day that taps me out? Can I switch up my schedule and say, instead of starting with emails that go on forever and I feel like I have to do it all day, why don't I start on the most important task that I didn't do the day before? Then let me go to the next important task. And then I will look at my emails at 11 a.m., right? It's reestablishing and reorganizing. And it's not saying like, oh my gosh, like I have to do this. It's saying what's, you know, what's going to put ease in your body when you start your day, getting something done that you needed to get done the day before the first thing that, that lets go of a whole bunch of stress, right? Then what's the next biggest thing that's going to take on a whole lot of stress. Then you go into the more stressful things, right? See if that helps stop apologizing. Oh my gosh. I was at, I, I still work at the hospital occasionally and I was at work yesterday and this sweet, sweet girl, like sweet girl was in the breast milk room. I opened the door and she's like, sorry. I was like, girl, what are you sorry about? She's like, oh, I don't know. Like I'm in here. I'm like, you, you can be here. You can be here. She's like, oh, okay. I was like, don't apologize. There's nothing to apologize about. Notice if you're always apologizing. Because that is, you know, that is a, a really an interesting layer and component to consider. Do you feel like you are always, you know, I, I don't I don't even want to use the wrong words, but when you're constantly apologizing, it's you you feel like you're less than subconsciously, or you feel like you're not enough subconsciously or that you're in the way, or that all these different things. And maybe you felt that at one point in your life, right? And you're like, you're carrying that. So tap into that. Ask for your needs to be met, whatever that is, okay? As a mom, with all my shit going on, I told my husband, I was like, listen, we need a cleaning lady twice a month. I don't give a fuck, figure it out. We're doing it. It's gonna, you're gonna come home to a happy wife who wants to have sex and with dinner, okay? That's it. Simple as that. Do you want that? Yes. Okay, let's go. Because when you clearly, when you can clearly see what you need, which sometimes that might be difficult for people to recognize what it is that they need, but when you can clearly see what you need, you can begin to orchestrate that need being met in some way, shape, or form. Okay. So learn how to say no, ladies. Oh my God. How many times have we said yes to things? And then days later, we're like, shit, I really don't want to go. Right. Take the time. If, and again, my favorite, another one of my favorite quotes, if it's not a fuck, yes, it's a fuck now. And in that moment, if you agree to something that's a meh, that's a no at that time. And you know what you have to say? It feels like a no right now. 
ask me again when it comes becomes close. That's my answer. It feels like a no right now, but ask me when it gets a little bit closer and I'll let you know. That's it. Simple as that. Respective. You're not like, you know, you're not like, oh, I can't, you're not lying, right? You're just like, it feels like a no right now, but ask me later. Prioritize self-care. And this is something and why you're here and why you did this radiant reset, because self-care is super, super important. And when you recognize your needs, that is how you get those needs met. Okay. Be treated with respect. Don't do not allow anyone to disrespect you in any way, shape, or form. Word, action, anything. It's not okay. The moment that you accept that is the moment that you can continue to diminish your essence and your power and you dim it. Create your standard. Some of you may not know what that standard is. Start start creating that standard. Okay. And feel safe in your emotions. It's okay to move. It's okay to express all that you are feeling, sacred rage, anger, guilt, sadness, resentment, whatever it is, it's all a part of who you are and it's okay to feel them. All right. So tapping into the siren, your non-negotiables, what are your non-negotiables? Write a couple of them down right now. Like you could think like non-negotiable in relationships, non-negotiable um, you know, in my workspace, non-negotiable with being a mom, non whatever non-negotiables that you have, what are your personal non-negotiables? And then once you do that, like the non-negotiables of other people, what are your personal non-negotiables? Core beliefs. What is the first thing that you believe? It could be anything. Like you believe that there's a higher power, um, believe in God, whatever it is. And then what is the first thing that you believe about yourself? And then let's go a little bit deeper. What else do you believe about yourself and your life that can't be changed? Because that is essentially a core belief. If you feel like this will never change, this is it. This is how I am. This is who I am. This is how it is. That's a core belief. And then ask yourself, why do you believe this? And where did that belief come from? <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If there's anything that you wrote down that you believe cannot be changed, that being a core belief, the way the universe works, it will continue to give you confirmation that it is true because you believe it to be true. So just as you believe you're capable, think of something that you're really good at that doesn't take much effort, right? You're like, oh, I'm like, I'm so great at that. Like, that's so easy for me, right? There's no resistance there. And so it is, right? Because there's so much resistance around what you feel like it can't be changed, that resistance keeps you where you are. 
And that resistance, that energy that you're pulsating out is giving you that confirmation back in. So becoming a little bit more flexible, if what you feel like can't be changed is something you desire to change, we have to change our mindset around it. We have to become curious about it. We have to look at it from all different angles to see like, is this true? Why do I believe this to be true? What things have happened? Like where did, where was the first, you know, where was the first memory of this and keep unpacking it. Okay. So now establish boundaries. So with the above information, begin to put into place the boundaries that you can begin to put into action and communicate. And this is something that's going to take action. So with, with changing, there has to be the recognition that change is needed. There has to be ideas of how to change it. And then there has to be action, right? So you are made of a mind, you are made of a body, and you are made of a spirit. And unless all three of those components are in alignment with your core beliefs or with your core desires, something's going to be off. So this might look like you're physically in this job. You're mentally, you're mentally stressed out and spent, but inside you want better. You want more. That is your mind, your body, and your spirit in three con completely different places. How can we reel it all in? How can we reestablish boundaries in our current situation? How can we make our current situation a little bit better, but also in our minds know and work towards the real vision of what we desire? Instead of cursing the one that we're in, we need to be curious and creative of how we can better establish the situation and then recognize, okay, I made it a little better now, but I know this is not where I'm going to be forever. And I need to start exploring. I need to start putting it out into the universe that I'm ready for something more. I want to get paid X, Y, and Z. I want to work from home. Write it all down. Write it all down. When you go to Publix, you don't go to the public sub lady and say, I just want a sub. You know exactly what you want in that sub. And guess what? The universe hands it to you from that Publix lady who made your sub. If you go to the Publix lady, it's going to be the same thing. You know, if you go to the Publix lady and you're like, I want a sub, she's going to be like, uh, what kind of sub? I don't know. Okay. Do you want turkey? Eh. Do you want this? I don't know. It's going to take longer to get there. It's going to take longer to get what you want. Be clear, organize, move forward. All right, so this one's um, the alchemy of all of these badass babes we just talked about. So the sorceress. So this is the wise woman. Um, she can be found in all walks of life and carry various personalities. And she's also in quite a few Disney movies as well. Um, but she is whatever kind of support that we need at that point in our lives. And this is an archetype that is seen in fairy tales as a wise woman or a witch and stems from the early sh uh, sh sh shamanistic practices, as well as ancient goddess wor worshiping, where these cultures believed that feminine and female knowledge was super, super sacred. Um, and you could see this, and I won't get into it here tonight, but you could see this in various different Greek mythology, you know, Egyptian, all of these ancient, ancient traditions really hold and respect women um, as a balanced counterpart. They embody this idea of invoking the deities or divine feminine to communicate messages through divination like tarot, tea leaves, bones, scapules, and all other natural forms of nature. And they're really tuned in to their own natural nature. So because they are connected to this divinity, that divinity and that connection to divinity is from their connection to their deepest part of themselves and to nature itself, their natural nature. So these women were not just spiritual leaders or doctors in their communities. They really, um, they, I'm sorry, 
they were not just spiritual leaders, but they were also doctors in their communities because they utilized remedies like herbalism, astrology to really help others around them heal. So this is essentially the alchemization and the realization of our essence and of our power and really using it to heal ourselves, but then in turn, help others heal themselves and give them the way and give them and provide them this un deep understandings and these deep wisdoms. And by that <laughs> recognition, right? Like in stories, you see, you see people, you know, going to like the psychic or the witch or whatever, the local witch or whatever for advice, right? And then they get that advice, but then that person, if it's a really well thought out storyline, that that sorceress or or you know wizard also in, gives them the invitation to tap into that power within themselves right it's not that that person is dependent on the sorceress or the wizard it's hey yes here's the information but you've got it too it's in you all of the messages are in you so the sorceress is saucy by nature, okay? So this woman understands laughter, the medicine of the soul, reminds us of our humanity, enjoys life and its absurdities, can have fun, um, can be very witty and have this like interesting sense of humor, um, but can also be very mysterious in her own way. She can see through illusions and bring order to chaos, but her shadow often makes people uncomfortable because they become unwilling or unable to see their own truths about themselves through her, okay? So it's like uncomfortable truths. The sorceress has learned her lessons and mastered them to an extent, cutting away all that does not serve her without guilt, without stress, and without fear. If that person doesn't serve me, bye. If this relationship or this friendship doesn't serve me, bye. Clear in the way, clearing the path fully trusting the path that reveals itself before her and feeling those hunches, trusting those impulses and moving with them. And the more that you move with those impulses, the more trust that you're going to have within yourself and your higher self and the closer and closer and closer you become to alchemizing and working with instead of against what we consider to be this 3D reality. Okay, so just like all the others, she does have a shadow. She could be your best friend or foe. She can have doubts, right? So some of you might feel like you're you're throwing the tarot and you're like, I'm getting, I'm getting these messages and this feels really good. It feels like, is it real? Like, like, how do I know? Like, is that is that like a real message, right? That doubt, that doubt and that that self-doubt brings confusion, right? So this is this is can this is something that, you know. As you begin to develop your spirituality, you can dip into, but there can also be the sense of denial of the stage, meaning who am I, who am I to like, you know, read tarot for people or who am I to do this or who am I to do that? Right. And the potential is there, but there is a denial about what is there in her own mind. Okay. There can be over-identification with this archetype. Um, perhaps feeling powerless against everything going on around you, not recognizing your power, incapable of trusting others, super hypersensitive to their environment. Um, this is like where people are like, oh, like, I just feel like, you know, it's a heavy energy. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Instead of holding their own, right? And recognizing, wow, I feel that. Let me Let me center myself and ground myself real quick because I'm strong, like nothing is going to infect me, right? I am nothing, nothing will affect me. I've got this. Okay. Um, there's often, um, the logical aspects that replace the spiritual, right? So it's like, again, like where the mind taps in, where you're feeling things, you're seeing the synchronicities, you saw somebody that did this and these, these, these dots are starting to create a picture. Like what I'm visualizing right now is like, I don't know if you're a kid, but you would do these things. And it was like, you found one dot and the, you would have to find two and you would create this picture. But in the beginning, like, you're like, where is this going? And then you're like, ah, oh, right. Um, and also, you know, for years and years and years and years and years, women who were in this space were, you know, cast out as you know, devil worshipers or spiritually psycho or crazy, right? And there is this layer to to the sorceress that 
is very heavy at times as well, right? Because we don't want to be defined as that. We don't want to be categorized as that. So working with the sorceress. So when we fully master and embody the wise woman and the four elements of earth, water, air, and fire, we alchemize through strength and compassion and she can move through them balanced. Okay. We know that she's awakened when her ability to align herself in her mind, her body, and her spirit becomes wisdom, deep innate wisdom from within. Okay. Sometimes this is referred to the high priestess in the tarot and the high priestess is again, second card in the major arcana, which is duality. And it's, it's super connected to intuition. Okay. It's aligned in this deep sense of knowing that, you know, without really knowing how you know it. All right. And it's literally the authentic movement and balance of that happening at all times. Okay. So this is a quote, as I was like, as I was doing this, this quote came through wisdom is divine knowledge. Wisdom is everywhere in the big you. It is all around us all the time. It is present in everyone, in every moment, and in everything. It is no one's to possess, but all to access. Okay? So it is this divine wisdom and this divine knowledge that is literally there for you. To, it's not just in me or just in this person or just, it is in you if you nurture it. You don't need to seek outside of yourself. It is there, right? It is there. We just have to nurture it. We just have to expand upon it. So working with the sorceress, are you ready to access it? I'm sure some of you are, and some of you have already tapped into it. Um, so I want you to welcome messages from your spirit guides and really follow your impulses from this moment forward and commit yourself to that. Whether it's taking a course, taking a class, going somewhere, doing something, being a student in something, um, learning from someone, learning to tap into a special skill or talent that maybe you wanted to develop, whether it's like a violin or piano, something, okay? Move with those impulses because those impulses have messages. Now, here's another um, channeled little prayer that came through. Um, and if you want, um, maybe I could I can copy it and put it in the email. Uh, but this will be obviously in the recording. But I thank you for being present in my life and guiding me through the many paths I walk. Even the times when I don't feel like you were there. I know you were there. And I may not have been open to seeing or hearing you. Forgive me and remind me to awaken daily to the sun and to the golden light within me. May I tap into whatever I need. Thank you so much for the blessings in all areas of my life, as well as keeping them safe from harm's way. I invite synchronicities, messages, feelings, knowings, conversations, people, places, all that you desire to speak to me, to speak to the deepest part of my knowing that awaken my wisdom. Show me where I should go, what I should do, what I should say, and how I should say it to be in alignment with my essence, my totality, my authenticity. May I accept these messages as gifts and integrate them on my path. I speak and call in blessings on all areas of my life, and I trust I am divinely guided always. Woo! Can I get an amen up in here? So good, right? Start that off every single day and see what starts to happen for you. Shift the energy and maybe even like record yourself saying this and hit play every single morning, right? Trust your divine essence. It is within you, okay? All right. <laughs> I want you to write down the names of three women who inspire you and embody the sense of self-confidence and wisdom. This could be Beyonce. This could be anyone, anyone and everyone. Um, but just to give you an idea of where and what you essentially um, kind of connect to as far as inspiring women that embody that essence of self.
And then write down the words um, of the qualities of these women that inspire you. So, okay, here are these women, they inspire you, but what qualities do you see within each one? And it could be many different qualities within each one. And then I want you to take a moment and recognize that what you see in them is actually in you. And what you see in them that inspires you and, and excites you, you also have and attain, which is really, really cool to think about because like can see it. Like sees like, right? So it's there. It's in you. We just have to give her a good old smack in the tush, wake her up to her power. All right, so now I want you to list your strengths. And then ask yourself, what can you do to begin to trust your inner wisdom a little bit more? Maybe it's committing yourself to following those little hunches when your body is like, fuck yes, like I need to do this. I need to go there. I want to try that. I want to go to that restaurant, whatever it is. And it doesn't even have to be that big. It could just be like you woke up and you're like, I'm going to the beach today. I'm tapping out. I'm calling out of work tomorrow. Isn't that a tough one? but it's so good. Sometimes we need it. Maybe you wake up and you're like, I'm calling out of work. It's it. I'm just going to rest. All right. And the last one, how does aging make you feel? So the sorceress is depicted as an older woman because of the wisdom she's attained throughout the course of her life. It doesn't always have to be, um, you know, that depiction as the grandmother or later on in life. It just sometimes takes people longer to get there. But you are on the path to getting there way more quickly than that on this journey. And when we look at aging and we look at how it makes us feel, notice if it's if it's on the 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 physical. Notice if it's on the internal. Notice what it is that comes up for you when you think of aging. And if you feel like aging is gaining wisdom, <clears throat> or can you gain that wisdom by looking at things in a different perspective? All right. So, how do we work with this sorceress energy? And for some, this might sound crazy, but in order to master your third eye, you have to ground your energy. And that could be putting your feet in the ground, but more so putting yourself back into your body, body awareness. Okay. And it happens through the physical sensations. And you're like, how do you activate the third eye through the physical body? Well, the body keeps score of your traumas, your dramas, and your pains. And if you haven't read that book, I highly suggest you buying the book and the workbook. It's called The Body Keeps Score. And move into your body. I just recently started doing foam rolling. Holy shit, that stuff hurts. But stay on those pain points. You don't avoid the pain points. You stay on them. You put yourself in a very challenging state that is going to release what you're carrying energetically. So by, by allowing yourself to be in this extreme painful moment, you breathe into it and you ask your body, 
What is it showing me? What am I holding here? What is the tension that's here? What is this? Where did this come from? Is there emotions attached to this? Am I noticing different memories or different thoughts coming up as I'm here? And notice that as you sit and you ask questions, your body feels heard. And in the very same respect, you're also letting go of the physical tension, which is the physical manifestation of the energetic emotions you were holding. Okay. So doing things on the physical level um, that are that are a little bit stressful on the body that builds mental and emotional resilience. Yin yoga is another one. So that was my my first love because I was a marathon runner, hot yoga, the better like kick-ass type of workouts. And then I, I fell into yin and yin really cracked me open to myself because it was just me and my body and my thoughts in stillness. Okay. I had, I had anger at the table. I had frustration at the table. I had four letter words at the table. Everybody was at the round table with me, but the kicker was that I was present and I was honoring and I was noticing the different emotions and I was allowing myself to feel them when they never had a space to be felt. Another option is hot and cold extremes. So going into saunas, going into ice baths. Ice baths are amazing. Sometimes, actually, my husband just bought me for Valentine's Day these like ice rollers. Um, and it's really good. And I put them on my chest. You could get like, you know, frozen vegetables and put it on your chest. Um, I love taking hot baths and then, you know, putting it on cold at the very end and doing a cold splash because it calms down the nervous system. And when you're doing that, it's also challenging your mind. So when you're in a sauna, your mind's going to go and you're like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Or if you jump into an ice plunge, you're like, "Ah!" and that's your moment of come back into the body. It's fine. You're fine. Everything feel everything. Notice what's coming up with everything. Don't get caught up in the mind. Recognize the emotions, right? It's activating the parts of you that need to be seen, that need to be heard, that need to be felt in order to alchemize those emotions and feel them. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, um, like I said, challenging through active and passive practices and third eye visualization. So maybe when you're going to sleep, if you're looking for an evening practice, just visualize what's, what's at your third eye today. Visualize what's there. Notice what's there. Maybe one day it's a diamond and it looks like a diamond's different facets. Maybe one day it's a ruby. Whatever it is, whatever comes up for you, maybe take that moment to be like, how's my third eye doing today? What's it look like today? Hmm. I wonder what that means. Hmm. What does the color red mean to me? What does that shape mean to me? See what messages you got going on. All right. So last little quote here. Go inside, listen to your voice. Every question has an answer. Your soul is full of wisdom and knows the way by Yogi Bhajan. And the beautiful part of all of this is that you have access to it at any given time. That is the end of that. We want to chat a little bit. We can kind of chat and see what came up. Um, if I know we ran a little bit late here because we did our little chats, but if you'd like to stay, we can we can share if anything came up. Uh. I'll share a little bit. I thought it was all very, very interesting. I think that I wrote down a lot, but I like the following the pings and like following that intuition. I think that was one of the things I had spoken about at the beginning of the reset is kind of like trusting myself more. Um, and so I still struggle with that. And so this is helpful um, for that sense. And I, I always like when we do the visualization, I feel like that's really helpful of like 
picturing who we want to be or what that person would look like. And so I want to keep that in mind too. Um, but I feel like there is a little bit of each one that I could kind of resonate a little bit, um, more so probably like the saint and then the siren. Yeah. Like all of them kind of. Um, yeah, well, that's it. A little we bit, but we have all of them. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> we have all of them. And that's the cool part is like, we have to accept those parts and like work with it, you know? Mm -hmm. it has a lot, a lot of things to think about <laughs> awesome and if you if you have any questions you know where to find me anyone else I can say something yeah uh, I feel like a lot of the conversation about the the saint is doing all of that like child work um as a grown you know woman now and then you said, you mentioned that in order to get to like the next one, which is um, the servant, that you said that the saint has to be honored in order to get to the sorceress, I'm sorry, to the sorceress. So in order to go through these four phases of archetypes, you can't, you can, unless you clear that inner child stuff. Absolutely. And that's like crazy to me because I've also done a lot of inner child work and a lot of things that you mentioned um, with your mom, you know, I've had with father, my father, my mom, different family members. Um, and it's like, and then I seem like I, I have a sister. So I see my sister, right. And I see how like wounded she is and I cannot get through to her. It's just the same life over and over again for her. My life has changed drastically because it's the only option I have. The only option I have is to change. Right. I cannot stay same. If I stay the same, I'll, I'll never find a spouse. I'll never have children. I'll never move in my life. And then I look at her and she just kind of is very comfortable where she's at, but she doesn't ever move. She doesn't ever change because it's just too scary. And she cannot do that in her child work, even though I've, I've said to her, like, you need to like open up to this and, and she just can't. And then I can see that maybe that's why she also can't um make it to you know the sorcerer so let's just say on that path to that path um and then she like looks at me a little bit like we're like she's like well you're just crazy so I'm just like okay well I also I was gonna think you're crazy at one point <laughs> yeah it's one of those things where it's like okay so I was able to get myself through a master's degree and like double my salary I found um my a beautiful the most amazing man I've ever met in my life I got married. I'm holding a healthy relationship. I want a family one day, but I'm crazy. You know, so Sometimes it's too, though, when in traumatic situations, and this might resonate with you too, Christina, is that sometimes our intuition led us in the wrong direction at a, you know, at a young age and we, we, we can't trust it, or we haven't learned to trust it again. So, you know, when you think of the child the child is trusting of the parents. The child puts everything in their all in the parents. That is like their lifeline. They will do anything to make this connection, even if it's a, if it's an unhealthy one. So she might be stuck. Yes. But she might also have been guided, you know, in the wrong direction, who knows? And she, she can't trust it anymore because it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't able to be trusted before in the past. Yeah. And then, and then you realize that, you know, if you go through the other archetypes, like the servant, <laughs> well, I have to take care of myself too. I can't just do things for you or the siren. Well, I can, you know, you can embody some of those characteristics and completely just turn off people like that who are just led differently. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of the day, you just have to be within yourself with all of these different these four types and give and, them space mm -hmm. and that's the journey and it's not my responsibility to do that for someone else necessarily it's just more about um being on the journey on your own journey and hopefully you know people will be inspired by it absolutely you have to lead by example and the right people will follow you know mm -hmm. and you have to lead with what it feels true and authentic to you and you can't force anybody else to change no. you know, like with my private clients. I give suggestions, but at the end of the day, 
I can't twist your arm and force you. There has to be something within you that says, I want this enough. I want this enough to, to hire this person to help me change, to help guide me. And that's the only time that it really happens. It's when you literally commit yourself to being able to be flexible and pliable and curious mm -hmm. and explorative okay. for you and for your growth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Thank you for sharing. I want to say something too. Um, first of all, Georgina, your name is very beautiful. <laughs> I love your name. And uh, I remember when I started working with Shelly, I was telling her about myself and I, and Shelly was like, no, you cannot talk about yourself like this. And I never realized <laughs> how negative I was. And now um, I have this very, I would say she's my best friend, although we don't talk a lot. Um, and when I talk to her, she's very negative. And for the last, I don't know, six months, she has been telling me, oh, I really enjoy spending time with you now because you're always pointing out. I'm like, and I feel like I'm more aware now of what I say, what people are saying. And I never really got about the vibration, you know, oh, you have to be in that vibration, that vibration. It took me almost a year to finally feel what a good vibration is. I have been listening to books all the time, you know, things that I wanted to improve in my life, being around groups like this, you know, the other group that we have too. And that's how we feed our soul. And that's how we are going to feel that vibration. Um, and it takes time. It's not like, you know, a few months or so. I, with our group, I started doing more exercising and I don't like to exercise, but I'm not even thinking. I'm like, I have to go. I just have to show up, you know? Um, and also with that Zumba, Shelly has been talking about the dancing and we do dancing too in our one-on-one. Um, and it feels so good. And I was going to Zumba, but it's a workout, right? And I don't like to work out. But this last week, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I felt the big, the breakthrough. You know, how good is that? This, uh, is what I, this is what I used to love when I was, you know, a teenager going to clubs and, and singing. And, and that's what we need to do. You know, we, we lose that when we are um, in our adulthood and we have kids. I have a child too. Um, so it's kind of a now that he's, you know, grown and I'm um, finding myself again and taking care of my inner child. So I love being um, around like minded people. And uh, Shelly, I cannot thank you enough. And I wanted to say that it's very smart of you to make um, these courses separate, right? Not sep also separate from the one on one, but um, giving us some time to really embody what we learn um now we think this two months in, in between one session one course <laughs> to another and then when we learn more things we can also implement that too so it's very nice that we have that opportunity thank you yeah listen it was purely channeled i was on the airplane and i was like i need a mind body spirit reset and it was a download and the second one was a download too because i was originally just thinking oh well i'll just do the same one <laughs> and then I was like, no, you're going to do it with the seasons. You're going to do it with the moon. You're going to do it with the astrology. You're going to work with the energy of what's happening in that moment. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> so I'm grateful that you guys are finding it beneficial because I poured my heart into it. And I knew I was like, this, this is a, and it's going to get more and more refined. So forgive me if it's not like the ideal, but you know, it's, it's an, it's a way to bring you into a community with like-minded women in a bite-sized chunk with working with me. That's not like, you know, a really big commitment financially, but also gives you the invitation to, to see what it's like, right. To see what this work looks like and to do the work and ask yourself, whoa, like, am I ready to really step into that best version of me and what it really takes? Am I, am I doing it? Am I taking the steps and really recognizing your own part in the 30 days, because that is really reflective in and of itself like showing up for yourself, what each thing came up for you, 
And that, that gives you a little bit of insight as well. It's like, am I making excuses to do it? Or am I making excuses not to do it? Like, just be curious. That's all it's about. It's like, feel into it a little bit. <laughs> so thank you, Mari. Yeah. I didn't pay her to say any of that either. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, and I feel, but I was like, okay, that's awesome. A couple of my private clients took it. I was like, I love it. Um, it's funny because I feel like I, of course, when we, when we have that breakthrough, we just want to help others. Right. Right. Um, and I'm still, I'm still in the process. I'm not there yet. And, but like I told you privately, when I look myself one year ago, you know, and where I am now, I cannot wait to see where I'm going to be in the next year. You know, I see improvements, but, and what I love about you, Shelly, is that, you know, you respect my time. I am kind of go slow than versus other people, but it's okay. You know, yep. the idea is to be in the path and then, and it's your journey. Right. Um, and I cannot wait to, um, to celebrate it, you know, with you, yeah. you, I feel like she's holding our hand, you know. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Always. Yeah. So I want to say something. Um, I couldn't remember the name. Uh, maybe you guys know what is that therapy called? That uh, it's like a family constellations. Constellation. So my brother just did that um, two weeks ago, weekend. And when I was in Brazil in May, I had something with my mom and she hasn't talked to me ever since. And he did the constellation on Sunday. And then that Sunday he called us, my sister and I, which both of us live here. And the constellation was focusing on my mom, right? Who is battling cancer for a long time and this and that. And, um, that was a Sunday. And then when he called, I decided to call everybody in the, it was through WhatsApp. So I decided to call everybody on the, um, on the video and also her, I tried, that's what we do, right? I tried calling her on Christmas. She didn't pick it up on New Year. She didn't pick it up like everybody as a family, right? And then I tried that day again, two weekends ago, and she didn't pick it up. And then on my, and then my, my brother had that on Sunday. And then on Monday, she sent me a message after seven months not talking to me, um, saying, hi, I saw your missed um, call. Hi, um, how is everything? Blah, 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 blah. So we have been talking ever since. And that's why when you talked about mom, you know, I'm like, wow, I never thought about that. What, a, what are things that you wanted to tell her? Um, and it's, you know, and I know she's going through all of this because of her um, anger that she has inside. And I'm like, you've been battling that for five years, you know, and you don't, you don't cure yourself and it come, it's going to keep showing up until you, you fix that um, emotion within you. I, you know, um, physical, dis physical is literally dis-ease. Exactly. Yeah. Physical things that we have, it's because of our emotionally that affects our physical. So it's uh... and another thing to consider that came up. Um, and this was something that I did was I attempted. And if your mom is still alive, you can ask her questions about her childhood and how her relationships were, were because there is something to be said in the way your mother was to you in the way that she was treated. So for totally. instance, my mother, my mother came from Cuba in the Cuban culture, like the man is everything. She had an older brother. She wasn't really, you know, given much attention and she was a lot younger <laughs> and they really didn't, you know, they didn't say, Hey, Maria, I'm proud of you. Like, Hey, this, it was always about the brother. It was always about the male. So I had to do, and I did a little meditation to kind of tap into what her childhood was like and start to see from her perspective as to why she held her pains and her traumas that she was projecting onto me. So that's also really helpful and kind of diffuses the uh, energetically charged finger pointing because I finger pointed my mom for years and still do. And I'm still working on it with certain things, but when we're able to see a person's pain behind what they're doing and how they're acting, you see like their inner child that just wasn't seen, heard, felt, hugged, acknowledged, cared for, yeah. neglected, whatever it is. For my mom, it came up everything about her childhood and her relationship <laughs> with her dad, with her, uh, with my grandfather. 
and she's carrying that, you know, carrying that now, um, looking for love within us, you know. Um, so anyways, this was very amazing. I Have you had any podcast about Constellation? I have not. Okay, I thought that would be a great... Yeah, that's um, a good idea. Yeah. We'll open that up, throw it out yeah. there. Yeah. Talk to a person. <laughs> anyways, I'm going to miss share? this, guys. Sam, do you have anything to share? Yeah. Um, I pretty much, I related to everything except the, the mother part because I am childless and I'm still like, I'm unsure if I want kids. So I'm like, I don't know. Um, it, it's, I don't know not, if it's, it's not like the mother, it's like the archetype. So it means like how you mother yourself too, not you being a mother. And it's also your relationship with your mother and also the way in which you serve people. That's why, that's why I called it the servant, but they usually put they put the mother in, like they put the servant in under the archetype of a mother. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess when I read that, I, cause I, I do have two nieces and I guess, cause I am, I am sort of nurturing, but like in my own way, I'm very like, uh, I don't know. I kind of let that, like, I let her come to me. She's like two, cause I know by that age, she's kind of like aware of, her boundaries she knows how to say no and whatever like I just never want to be like a bother you know what I mean because she already has so much energy around her like I did take her in the ocean today and I took all the sand out and like the fact that like she trusts me because she knows how to swim so I was like go in the water and you know take all the sand out but like I it's almost like I'm like trusting myself in a way like oh wow I can take care of a kid because there's like that fear of like something going wrong like me not being capable of you know what I mean caring because I still am learning a lot about myself and I'm like it's a lot just to take care of myself I can't even imagine you know <laughs> taking care of another being so that was a part that I was fixated on the most but like that is um, definitely a layer yeah um but that's why I'm like, I'm very in between. Like I tell my family, if I have a kid, it's one, you know, like, cause you know, it, it pops up, especially I saw my mom's side of the family and they're old fashioned. They're like, are you married yet? No. Uh, <laughs> do you want kids? And like, I told my, my mom's uncle, no, I don't just to like, kind of like shut them up <laughs> you know and I also like to see people's reaction because it's like I, I I want people to know it's a different time now where it's like we are in more control of our lives than ever before right like we're more we're more independent than ever before like we can decide what our future will look like you know what I mean without uh having a man decide that for us you know what I mean yeah. so yeah, that was the part that I was like, no, but I understood that it was obviously I am motherly to myself. Like I, I'm on vacation. I have not drank alcohol. Nice. You know time That's right. You're still, me? you're still a part of you. you came on the call. <laughs> yeah. Just, just like today, my dad was like, you want a little sip? And I like flipped on him like, what part of no one's trying to stay? Because <laughs> it's like annoying. It's like, it's like that peer pressure. And I'm like, like, just leave me be. Because it's like, I see it as just like, it is a toxin. And I don't like the way I feel, you know? So that was something that was different. I hadn't done because normally on vacation, I'm like, yeah, I'll have a drink or whatever. But I felt so much better all these days not drinking. All I do is drink <laughs> water. <laughs> That's it literally but yeah. yeah you could feel it in your body and also like even in your resonance you know like your frequency and my I have something in my throat <laughs> excuse me like in your vibrational frequency and like things that you pick up on emotions are clear there's no confusion when you put alcohol in the mix there's confusion right and you're just you're just able to move with more clarity 
And it's not saying yeah. that you can't dabble in it occasionally, but it's like recognizing like, first, why am I doing it? Am I doing it to be social? Am I doing it to fit mm-hmm. in? Like, what is my reason why first? Do I really just want to drink? And like savoring it and enjoying it, that's one thing, right? But, but yeah. I love that yeah. you're, I love that you're connecting to that. Yeah, and it's like, I feel like kind of like a, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if it's just drinking water or whatever. It felt like I was on a spiritual high a little bit, like, especially today. I don't know, being in that water, which was so amazing. Like, it felt almost like I was like in a dream. Like, this can't be real. It was one of, you know what I mean? It was one of those, Ah. like, surreal. Like, I almost like, not saying I was like starting to feel paranoid, but it was like, whoa, like this feels like almost too perfect. Like it was like the perfect beach day. It was just like, like I didn't, like if I could go back there tomorrow, I would, even though tomorrow I was probably gonna be busy, but it was such a perfect beach. Like the sand was like clay on the ground, the water was clear. It was like, I was at such total peace. And that's, cause normally I'm always stressing. That's yeah, I'm normally stressing every day, but every morning, like I let my family know I had to do meditation before I get up. I have to journal because everyone's up and at it because my, my niece, it's whenever she wakes up, everyone gets up. <laughs> no, it's like I have to, I have to, I'm a slow riser. Yeah, I have, I'm a slow riser. So I have to like, you know, I want to uh, bring my best self to my family it's it's all about energy and I've also worked out a lot at the at the gym we have here and stuff so you know I'm just that's probably why you're feeling like so elevated is that you're staying you're in the right environment to feel those feelings and you're incorporating the right tools to 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 begin to integrate those feelings so you have the external merging with your internal and that's when you have like those moments of like aha and bliss. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, it was also because of the, the reset program as well, implementing that and like your energy, just like they're mentioning, you know what I mean? It's just even the yoga that you provide stuff, everything that I incorporate in my routine, it just, cause you know, my mom, like, she tells me that she's she's proud of me and like like because she's more of the servant she's very she's a giver 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 and I'm trying to tell her to come to your yoga thing with me but she would have to stay with me Saturday night and Sunday but she's she's preoccupied being a grandmother and and stuff but it's like you gotta make time for you and like she's so concerned about her she has a herniated disc she's so concerned about you know what I mean doing certain exercises or you know so it's like because I want her to take care of herself too you know I, I try to tell her that but yeah she, you gotta she remember is- you gotta remember too it's like you can tell somebody but they have to have and want the desire like we were talking with Gigi about you know it's it's the invitation is great but know that just if she doesn't go it's not her time yet you know and she'll she'll come she'll come to the water when she's ready but like her knowing that you're asking is good enough and you letting go of any expectation whether it's her not going or her saying no or her saying yes is gonna actually open up that invitation to her more yeah you know, it's just being like, hey, remember, I have yoga on, on Sunday if you if you ever want to come. And it's just like dropping the seed, dropping the seed. Instead of being like, you should, you should, you should. <clears throat> Maybe just drop the seed and let it, let it fester in her in a way that will call to her. Yeah, I think it's because I've been, I don't know, my life has felt so abundant that it's like, I want to share it with everyone. Like yeah, I want everyone to yeah. experience that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want everyone to feel what I feel because I know everyone's in different paths and situations, different types of stressors. But it's like, you know, I wish people took more time for themselves. 
people are so like robotic. Like we had to get up, we had to eat, we had, you know what I mean? No one really like sits with themselves. Like I brought my Kindle and my Kindle helped me like in situations where like, you know, maybe I felt like not bored, but like, you know, my family likes to play dominoes and you know, that's not my thing. So I would be out by the pool and it's a way where I can focus on what I'm interested in. It's just a way to pass the time instead of like being on my phone, you know what I mean? Right. So it's just like, I don't know, I guess it's obviously everyone's life is different. No one's gonna approach like the same way I am approaching, but I don't know. I like to share my the wisdom that I, I gained from this or whatever with other people and it's either they take it or leave it. Exactly. And that's all you do. You just follow that yeah. page. Hey, maybe I need to tell this person about this book or hey, I need to share this this class with this person. Just again, follow those little pings and trust that the right people will hear it at the right time to take action. Yeah. So grateful for you ladies. Thank you so yes. much for sticking with me. I know it's late. I'm so, so happy that you have completed the reset. Please revisit it whenever you feel. And again, look out for that email for the discount for the upcoming one since you were part of this one and for the discount on the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Love you all. Have a great night.